Virtual Tabletops, the modern game master's best friend. These fantastic pieces of software allow you as the game master to provide your players with so much immersion in the way of music, ambient sound effects, and so much more, despite your players and you perhaps not being in the same room or even on the same continent. And especially recently, developers have been pushing the immersion standard even further with the creation and growing popularity of 3D virtual tabletops, the most popular of which is currently Tailspire. But recently I was actually able to try out a pretty new virtual tabletop to the world of VTTs, I guess, called RPG Stories. While it's a fairly new competitor, Editor, RPG Stories, which is being developed by Brave Alice Games, has proven itself to be a true passion project with a team behind it that has some exciting ideas, an ever-growing community of supporters, and in my opinion, has tons of potential. But while you may be drooling with anticipation or getting giddy with excitement after seeing some of this footage and wanting me to kind of go over all of the things that this VTT offers, there are some drawbacks to it in its current early access state, which we will cover, but before that. Hello, my name is Nate Mon, and I've been using virtual tabletops both three-dimensional and two-dimensional for years at this point. And in this video, I want to give a general showcase and overview of some of RPG Story's really new and exciting features and upcoming features that it's going to have, as well as why I think you should consider checking it out for yourself, and why I think this VTT has so much potential. And for full disclosure, I was actually reached out to by the producer of RPG Stories and given a Game Master Steam key once I agreed to make a video kind of giving a review or overviewing RPG Stories. And I worked out because I was already planning on making a series of videos talking about some of the more popular 3D virtual tabletops that are out there, so it was actually really good timing. But besides that, I wasn't given any money by Brave Alice Games, the studio that makes RPG stories, and I'm not affiliated with them in any way, and this video definitely isn't sponsored by them. I was literally only given the Steam key and asked if I would be interested in making a video about RPG stories, which I agreed to. But now that I've cleared the air, or restored transparency, or regained my honor, and all that good stuff, let's actually get into the review or overview for RPG stories. RPG stories is a VT that's currently in early access with three different versions that only require one purchase depending on what kind of a role you want to fill at the table. But what sets RPG Stories apart from other VTTs is that it aims to allow you as the Game Master to create realistic and immersive three-dimensional worlds to run your game sessions in, while also making the creation of that world easy and quick as opposed to other VTTs that have a steep learning curve and could cost you potentially hours to make just a nice looking scene or battle map. Regarding the look and feel for the VTT, the style that RPG Stories Assets and Objects is going for is more of a lifelike and realistic look as opposed to more of a cartoony or clay-like look that some of us may be used to. When I was first looking into RPG Stories, I wasn't too sure how I felt about this realistic looking style that they were kind of going for, because sometimes realistic looking models and assets can look a little cheesy in the VTT format if you know what I mean, but that's entirely not the case with RPG Stories and I gotta say that I was really surprised with how many assets the platform already has that look great and the quality of them despite the platform only being in early access. So to give you guys some numbers, RPG Stories has over 6,000 total assets across all of the different styles of objects that they offer, and they're planning on adding thousands more. And you may be kind of confused what I mean by different styles. Well, RPG Stories isn't dedicated to one style, genre, or time period for all of their assets. They have walls, floors, tokens, and buildings that you can use to create a fantasy, modern, or even sci-fi adventure. This means that you can create super immersive looking scenes for your game sessions that are in different time periods, like for fantasy, for like D&D or something, or sci-fi for like a Star Wars themed adventure, or even a modern adventure like for a zombie apocalypse or for Call of Cthulhu or something. Like take a look at these dragon tokens for example, and Ulfgar I guess. They're super detailed, have idle animations, and if you enter into cinematic mode, they even have walking animations. And these animations extend to all of their tokens, which they have over a thousand of by the way. But let's say you don't like how the ancient red dragon model looks, like maybe you think it should be a bit bigger or perhaps a bit chunkier or something like that. Well, you can directly edit token dimensions or place them up in the air if you'd like to. And like I mentioned before, you can also make them walk around by clicking this little cinematic button right here. But as of now, and as kind of a quick note, if you make your tokens too big or mess with their dimensions too much, they kind of clip into the camera and you get this little weird angle like you're seeing right now. So just keep that in mind. But another thing that I really appreciate about these tokens besides their detail and their animations is that you can actually disable the animation if you want to by going to its properties and changing the animation speed to zero, or you can increase the animation speed if you want to. But obviously this little happy family of dragons and their adopted son I guess have to have a village to pillage, right? So let's make one. Using the building tools and assets that RPG Stories offers, I could build a pretty decent looking town scene, or at least what I consider to be a pretty decent looking town scene, complete with NPCs, foliage, and other details in about 20 or so minutes. 
Overall, the building tools are pretty intuitive, especially if you're familiar with using other 3D VTTs, because a lot of the controls are very similar. And if you really want to see what RPG Stories is truly capable of, then stick around, because I have a lot more to show you, and as a brief note, all of the scenes that I'm about to show you were built by me in my first sit-down session using RPG Stories. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I made it a specific point to not look up any tutorials or how-to guides or anything like that regarding RPG Stories to truly test if this VTT is as easy and intuitive to use as it claims to be. But with that being said, if you do want to watch some tutorial videos and guides regarding RPG Stories, Brave Owls Games has already made a series of well-made short videos that teach you how to navigate the VTT and use its tools, which makes learning how to use all of the features that RPG Stories offers incredibly easy and quick. But something else that's really cool about RPG Stories is that they have a Steam Workshop page that you can easily access in-game and download pre-made objects or scenes like this Medieval Market Street by Kahlo. And trust me, their Workshop page is huge, with hundreds of pre-made scenes, modular tiles, and even pre-made decoration assets like bookshelves, furniture, and other cool stuff that you can throw onto your battle map. And of course, once you import one of these pre-made assets, then you can edit it however you would like to by perhaps adding in some villagers or some additional details or whatever else you may want to add. And to get into the specifics of building a dungeon or battle map from scratch, you have these tools to work with. To start off, the ground tool lets you change the base ground layer to match whatever kind of scene you may be going for. The Room Builder tool then lets you choose from some pre-made room designs and create a room super easily and quickly. The Floor tool is for if you want to change the floor of a room you just made or perhaps add in a path. And then the Wall tool is for if you want to section off a portion of your world or section off portions of the room that you just created or things like that. Or you can even change the walls of the room if you want to. And then there's the Fence tool which kind of acts like the Wall tool in that it lets you section off little portions of your world to create little corrals for livestock or yards for a house or perhaps some farmland areas. And then if you want to add in some doors and windows to your rooms or structures or whatever then that's what the doors and windows tool is for. And speaking of buildings, the Structure tool has tons of pre-made ones that you can use to create entire cities or villages with ease, and if you want to add in some additional details to a building, like pillars for example. And then if you want to add in some more details to your world, that's what the object tool is for, because you can use this tool to add in small little details to your scene that really bring it to life and add character, like furniture such as chairs and tables, or other things like signs, trees, banners, and foliage. Plus, if you combine this tool with the mass placement feature, you can create an entire wilderness in seconds. And then finally, the characters and monsters tool, which lets you add in a little NPC PCs or character models to your world. But if you don't like the pre-made models that are available then don't worry because you may have noticed this little icon down here which lets you link your Hero Forge account to your RPG Stories scene, which allows you to import your very own character model. And then additionally, if you really want to add in some ambience to the scene and really set the mood, you can use the Sky and Weather tool to change the scene to match whatever kind of mood you're aiming for, and over here you can even change the time of day to make it darker or lighter. And on top of all of that, you can even add in some really cool looking visual effects to bring your scenes to life. However, as of now, there is no real way to import your own sound effects, ambience, or music into RPG stories. Like, they don't have a music player or an ambience player that's preloaded with like some stock sounds or things like that. So if you do want to use those things or implement some music or ambience into your game sessions while using RPG stories, you'll have to use a different method, like a Discord bot or something like that. And by this point, you might just say, Nate, why don't you just check their roadmap on their website or their Discord or something like that? But I couldn't really find a definitive, like, detailed roadmap except for the ones that's on their Kickstarter. To be more specific, Brave Alice Games recently launched this Kickstarter for RPG Stories, which, if funded, promises to add in tons of new features, assets, and effects, and more, including the ability to procedurally generate entire scenes with a simple click of a button. So if this is exciting or interests you at all, then I would definitely recommend supporting their Kickstarter, and if you're still kind of on the fence about things and not sure if you want to support them, then I would definitely recommend at least checking out their Kickstarter because there's tons of little tidbits, details, and videos giving you more information about what they plan on adding to RPG Stories. But something that is worth noting that those of us who are so familiar using a 2D virtual tabletop may take for granted is that RPG Stories in its current early access state comes with a Fog of War feature. While RPG Stories Fog of War isn't dynamic, meaning that the tokens reveal the map as they explore, it works in a very similar way to their room building tool in that you essentially designate an area to be covered by black or white Fog of War. But while some of you may think that the fog doesn't look all that great, in my opinion this doesn't matter because this tool does its job very well because you can hide rooms or entire portions of your map and slowly reveal them as players move throughout the map or your dungeon as opposed to players being able to see the entire map right from the get-go and kind of just asking them, hey please ignore the monsters in that room or having to place down the monsters once they enter a room and so forth. And especially in today's world of online RPG 
RPG gaming, Fog of War is a must-have for any VTT, so it's really cool to see that RPG Stories already has that, despite it being in early access. And one thing that they didn't need to include in this virtual tabletop, but they did anyways, which I really appreciate them doing, is the 2D import feature for if you want to use some 2D assets like a world map or perhaps a battle map. But don't let them fool you, this is a 3D virtual tabletop after all, so if you leave the top-down perspective when you're kind of using a 2D battle map for example, things start looking a little odd. But what I really like about this feature isn't necessarily the importing of a 2D battle map and then using it during my game session on a 3D VTT, but instead using that battle map as a kind of building template or blueprint to get an idea of your dungeon scale or battle map scale and layout, and then you can build on top of it using your 3D assets in RPG stories. But besides all of the importing and building tools at your disposal, you also have a journal tool, which obviously lets you keep notes, and you have the quest note tool, which allows you to place little nodes around the map that you can only access if you're the game master. Overall, I thought that all of the game master mechanics and building tools and features and things like that worked really well, and I was truly impressed with how well all of the scenes looked and how well all of the mechanics worked, despite the game only being out for like, what, a year at this point? And it's only in early access? Like, it's not even a officially released yet. And honestly, the tools are organized in such a way that if you just follow the tools going from top to bottom as a kind of workflow or order of operations, I guess, for creating a dungeon or scene, like you start by taking some notes about what rooms you want or the layout perhaps, then change the ground to fit your vision, then start by going down the list slowly until eventually you finish your scene. And in my experience, this method works really well. And on top of that, I honestly thought that RPG Stories truly was easy and intuitive to learn, which is honestly saying a lot because there are a lot of, or a couple of other 3D virtual tabletops, I should say, that are currently out there that almost require you to watch like a 30 to 40 minute how-to video and guide regarding all their features and tools and the building mechanics, all the different layers and how they play into each other and things like that. Like, you know what I mean? And the fact that RPG Stories looks amazing and you can build really intricate looking scenes and it doesn't require you to watch like super intricate videos is honestly really cool. But besides the building tools are these tools over here. These tools can be used to ping a location on the map and draw on the map to point out a path that you want to walk along or to draw attention to something. Additionally, there's a temporary visual effects tool that you can use to display spell impacts, traps, or perhaps the players interacting with something. And finally, the ruler tool, which can be used to measure distances and angles, both on the ground and going vertically. With my experience using RPG Stories, I thought that it delivered on its promise of being a very easy and intuitive VTT to learn and use while providing you as the game master all of the tools that you need to build a super immersive three-dimensional space for your players which is a big promise, and I was really surprised that they delivered on it. And what's even crazier is that's only going to get easier, because like I mentioned previously, what Brave Alice Games is trying to achieve with RPG Stories is creating a procedurally generated dungeon or map or whatever, and then being able to add on to it once you generate it, which could drastically cut down the time it takes to use RPG Stories to create a scene, which just makes it even better of a VTT. But with that being said, now that we've covered all of the amazing parts about RPG Stories, let's dive into the downsides to using this VTT. But before we do, please keep in mind, this virtual tabletop still is an early access, so a lot of these features will most likely get fixed, but there are some of these that they most likely won't be fixing, which we're going to cover with this first issue, which is accessibility. RPG Stories requires each player to own a version of RPG Stories in order to actually use a virtual tabletop and join a game session. But I will say that at its current price, I do think that it is reasonably priced, considering that the Game Master and the players only have to buy it once, and it offers so much in the way of immersion and features, and also considering that it most likely took the team a lot of hours to get this virtual tabletop to the point that it's currently at. But the second downside that I kind of experienced and can foresee is performance. Since RPG Stories is an early access 3D VTT, I can foresee there being some issues arising if you get carried away and create a massive dungeon or map and want to leave all of the animations for all of the tokens and objects on, and then when all of your players join, if they don't have a really beefy computer or a really good internet connection, it might lag things out for them or cause some unforeseen bugs. And I myself experienced this when I tried to create a really big scene or map using a lot of Steam Workshop assets that I found and things like that and trying to mix and match them, and then when I tried moving characters around or moving small little details on this map that I created, I did notice that there was a little bit of lag that was generated. And so I can only imagine that if you also add players into that with their connections and things like that, it could get pretty laggy. But again, it's an early access, so this is to be expected. But thirdly, like I kind of mentioned earlier, there is no sound effects, ambience, or music tool or feature as of yet. Music and ambience is a must-have for running game sessions in today's world, and since RPG Stories doesn't have that yet, I think that's a bit of a bummer and a bit of a downside in my opinion. But I wholeheartedly doubt that they have completely forgotten about this very important feature that many other virtual tabletops already have, and I'm sure that they have it on their list of features to add eventually. But, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to use 
these RPG stories and want to have ambient sound effects, music, and all that stuff, you'll most likely have to use a third-party service like a Discord bot or some other third-party service in order to do that. And the last downside is that there is currently no other animations for NPCs and monsters besides their walking and idle animations. While RPG Stories has thousands of beautiful NPC and character models that have idle and walking animations, they don't have any attack animations or death animations or things like that. And I'm not expecting Brave Alice Games to implement tons of super complicated animations for each of their tokens because that would obviously take forever to animate, but it would be nice for each of them to have maybe a basic attack and death animation for example, or maybe an animation where they reel from a player's attack or something like that. Because currently, in my opinion, the temporary visual effects that you can use to show an attack hitting or a spell effect or things like that don't really cut it for me. And in all honesty, this is probably because I've been extremely spoiled using JB2A's animations on Foundry, but with a 3D virtual tabletop with such potential like RPG Stories, I would hope that eventually there will be animations for their players or your NPC tokens or monsters or whatever to attack each other and for them to react to the attack. Because otherwise, if you're running a combat encounter and your players are describing their attacks and their spells and things like that, and then to represent those spells and attacks, you just have a little puff that you can put on the monster or maybe use some of the other visual effects that the game offers, I feel like that's a bit lackluster. And I feel like there's some untapped potential here considering that RPG Stories is a 3D virtual tabletop and it does offer a lot of immersion, but that immersion can be ruined when your players are describing these really cool attacks and then when they go to look at the 3D virtual tabletop, their 3D models are just kind of staring at each other and they're animated, but not in the way that the players were perhaps expecting or hoping. So now that I've kind of explained my reasoning, I hope that that clears up why I consider this to be a downside, and I really hope that there are more animations that get added to NPC tokens and monsters eventually. But again, this isn't early access. And besides these issues and some of the other ones that I mentioned in the video, those were really the only drawbacks that I have for using RPG stories. And while there currently isn't a character sheet tool or manager in the game, the Kickstarter that I showed you previously promises to add that into the game if they get funded. And even if they don't add in a character sheet to RPG stories, you can just use a third party like D&D Beyond or Demiplane to manage your character sheet, which is why I didn't really include the lack of a character sheet with RPG stories one of the downsides. To me, RPG stories shows an immense amount of potential to become one of the best virtual tabletops out there. The building freedom and creative potential that the software gives to game masters for them to use to create amazing scenes that immerse players in their world, all while making the VTT easy to learn and use, is utterly fantastic. From what I've seen, Brave Alice Games have continuously listened to their community regarding feature requests, bug fixes, and they are constantly pumping out regular updates and asking the community for feedback, all while delivering on their promises that they made back with their Kickstarter in 2022. And if they continue to do what they're doing right now by listening to the community, adding in tons of exciting new features, and continuing to polish this hidden gem of a virtual tabletop, I truly think that RPG Stories could become a titan of a competitor in the ever-growing world of virtual tabletops. But with that being said, let me know what you guys think about RPG Stories in the comments down below. Have you used RPG Stories before? And if you have, what did you think about it? And if you haven't, and this was kind of your first exposure to RPG Stories, what were your first impressions about some of the things that I showcased in this video? I'm really curious to hear what you guys think. But as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, be sure to leave a like. But with that, I hope to see you in the next video. Take it easy. Bye-bye.